Hi, everybody. It's great to be with you again on this latest episode of Get on the Grid with Chessie Roberts. This time, my guest is Jay Marie, and she and I would like for you to join us in aligning with the energies of co-creation so that this show gives you the best information to your highest good and best outcome. Welcome, Jay Marie. How are you? Thank you for having me. I'm great. Thanks. Awesome. For those of you who don't know Jay Marie and haven't met her yet, um, throughout childhood she was always searching for a connection with her own mother, who was on the spirit side. Though her gifts were there, it wasn't until many years later, after some unexpected life changes, that her awakening began. She herself felt compelled to seek out a medium, allowing her to hear those messages from her mother that she'd always longed for. These messages would forever change her life, leading her to find her renewed faith, spirituality, and the development of her own spiritual gifts. Through her growth as a medium, Jay Marie has found that she not only connects with her clients' loved ones, but works with their guides, angels, and past lives as well. With the assistance of the divine, she's aided throughout her readings, bringing in and uh, connecting with the link of love. I really like that. Jay Marie offers a unique style of card readings to aid in answering the day-to-day questions clients may have using their spirit team for guidance. In all her sittings, she finds it's an opportunity to recreate a memory, a moment, to bring your loved ones to sit with you once again. And I think that's wonderful. I know a lot of us would like that. Thank you. How did you get started doing this? Um, I know you said you were looking for information from your mother and, and got started with a uh, a medium, but what drove you to do that, do you think? Well, I think always through childhood, with my mom's passing, it was very unexpected, and I was only six, so trying to comprehend passing or losing someone you love so dearly so quickly, I think more through life I just kept finding that I, I wanted to reconnect with her or I wanted to understand why she would be taken from me in a sense. And through it all, you know, looking back especially now, I see all the signs that I was missing. And it wasn't that she wasn't around. It was just more I wasn't channeling or connecting the way that I could have back then. And, you know, through the years, I, again, I, I would write her letters. I would, I was always fascinated with crystals and rocks and um, psychics and mediums, but it never really clicked until many years down the line when I was 30. And I went through a divorce and just some really unexpected life changes, and I found myself a single mom with two kids just trying to find new direction in life. And one day I was watching a medium, and something was like, get your computer and Google one. So I did, and I actually had set an intention prior to this phone call and said, it's got, it's got to be this price, it has to be today, and that's it. Well, the lady that I contacted had actually told me she didn't work on that day. And I said, that's fine, you know, I'll, I'll give you a call another time. And she ended up calling back telling me that spirit told her that she needed to come in for me. So I went and sat with her. My mom came through, my dog Princess, many other loved ones, and it literally changed my life within that moment. And at the end, my mom came through and said, you have the ability to do this. And so with that, I started studying under various different mediums and psychics, and It's actually been two years this past June that I've been working on my development and working as a medium. Gosh, those little life changes will really get you headed in the right direction, won't they? Oh, Um, very much so. When they start happening, we don't see them for what they are. But I do believe that it's guidance using their little cattle prod to head us in (laughs) the direction we need to go in. What do you think? Oh, I completely agree. I I can tell you that prior to my spiritual awakening, different things started happening. I started sensing spirit. I had different phenomenons and paranormal things happening around my home. And then after the spiritual awakening happened, I said it was just everything falling into line. And I'm beyond, grate- beyond grateful to where it's gotten me because even looking back through childhood, the di- the different paths that I was led on, it all adds up till today. Mm. Well, that's wonderful. We're glad that you have found your calling and can help people. What is your favorite thing about mediumship? 
I feel honestly, I don't want to say anything's my favorite because I find that in every sitting, there's something different that not only the client gets out of it, but something that I get out of it as well, whether it may be the healing or the teaching or the wisdom that the divine, you know, channels through me. There's just so many different things. But I would have to say the connection with the client, I feel, would have to be one of the best throughout it because I relate. I understand what it's like to miss someone so bad and not be able to hear from them for 24 years. So with that, I think to me that's the most important is just to see the healing that a client can leave with just from sitting for an hour. I would say that's a very, very important aspect of the whole thing. I'm going to get a little technical here, and if I'm asking you to reveal secrets you don't want to talk about, (laughs) I understand, because I kind of get a little nosy. But what is your process for connecting on such a deep and, this sounds really funny, and high level all at the same time? Well, my process is I always meditate. I I use the Reiki for myself, clearing chakras, things of that nature. But I really feel that my process all starts with prayer. I was raised Catholic, and for many years I, I pushed Catholicism away because I didn't truly understand a lot of it. And I feel that through my spiritual journey and my spiritual awakening and my renewed faith that that is ultimately a lot of my process is prayer. I pray, I, um, I open myself up, but more so than anything, I just feel, I wouldn't say that I have an exact process every day, but when I'm not working, I'm still working on my development and with connection with spirit, things of that nature, because nobody can say they, they know it all, because you never do. There's so many possibilities, possibilities and limitless expectations that we can reach if we just connect. Mm -hmm. I would think that living in that state of connection all the time would really amp up your ability to hear clearly and see clearly and understand better what it is that you're trying to channel for the client, would you say? Oh, I completely agree. And, you know, I don't want to say I live in it all the time because, of course, we have to shut down our we have to shut down our energy centers or our connection because otherwise we would be on 24-7 and our body would never rest from that. But from the beginning of my development to where I am now, I completely agree because I stay in meditation. They talk to me different ways. And I even have new learnings through clients, especially when there's a certain maybe medical condition I've never felt from spirit side. And I go in and I can describe it. You know, and then after I'm done with my client, I'll ask, you know, do you mind if you could tell me what that was just for my own learning? So even with my client, there's a beautiful learning behind it. I've discovered through my years of doing things of this nature with my Reiki and that if we are open, we always do learn something. And that learning just expands our everything. Yes, completely. Makes things come in better, clearer, and every time you have an an expansion package, uh, you connect better the next time. Yes, and I always tell my clients, too, um, I like to consider my connection a triangle because I work from my energy to spirit's energy to the client's energy and then back to me. And I always... Um, if a client comes in and you can tell they're nervous, I'm always like, okay, we have to breathe <laughs> because I <laughs> have to use good. energy too. <laughs> um, but I agree with the expansion package. And I've had spirit at one time. Um, I remember at the beginning I was I was doing my readings and it was all mediumship. There was no psychism. And the next thing I know, I have nothing but psychism and no mediumship. And it was Spirit's way to say, okay, right now we're going to train on this. Right now we're going to train on this. And it's just, it's always ever-changing. That's what I love about it. It's never the same. Can you explain for our listeners who aren't familiar with those terms the difference between psychism and mediumship? 
Oh, yes. Um, every medium is a psychic, but not every psychic is a medium. A psychic is someone who can help you with future things, presence, um, past. It's more generalized, I say, in question, questions, love, life, career, direction, things of that nature. And a medium is someone who connects with your loved ones who have crossed over on spirit side. Okay. I will, this My mind is just flying with questions here, so forgive me for a couple of minutes. But, um, I have discovered that when I'm giving a Reiki session, quite often I end up connecting with someone who has passed from that person's life. And a lot of times through the Reiki session I get messages for these people and I just pass them along without even thinking about it anymore. I was very careful before, but I've discovered that a lot of healing occurs and a lot of um, forgiveness, I'll say, occurs as the person is healing their physical problem through whatever it is I tell them that I get from the other side. Would, is that mediumship? I would say that it's a form of channeling. I don't want to say mediumship per se, but I feel those that can receive those messages as you are, yes, I would say that there's a form of mediumship within you. Now, to me, I feel that in Reiki especially, which is absolutely beautiful that you do hand those messages over, and I love how you said at the beginning I was careful, but I'm sure that you know your clients now, things of that nature, because, and I know you don't do this, but for listeners who may not know, you never want to just give somebody a message without them being prepared or accepting of it. You never know what state they're in, of course. But I would say that definitely there is some form of connectivity and when you're in Reiki the vibrations are so high and it's when you have that direct energy flowing through you of healing and the divine and spirit it's hard for you not to hear those messages so I completely agree that there's more than just a physical healing that there's so much more on the emotional level that can be removed during Reiki as well when you do deliver those messages. So I think that's absolutely beautiful. Well, I do ask the client, I'll tell them, all right, I'm getting a message from the other side from someone, and I don't always know who it is, uh, mom, grandmom, grandfather, and I'm really not too concerned about that. They ask every once in a while, who was that? And if they'll tell me, I'll tell them, but if the other side won't, then I don't. But I'll ask them, I'm getting a message for you. Do you want to hear it? And then I tell them, I just don't blurt it out. <laughs> right. But you know, and I, some people don't understand that, so that's beautiful that you don't. I remember when I first started studying anything along my spiritual path, I was working as a an operator for a department store. And I also worked in the fitting room. And I'm sitting there, it was kind of a dull, quiet time, and a shape appeared before me. It wasn't it was kind of like a column of smoke. Ooh. And I got the intense impression that it was trying to get my attention. So there in the middle of the busy department store, I said, what do you want? And they wanted me to call their sister to come to the fitting room. And they wanted me to tell their sister that everything was all right and they forgave Aww. her. And I was absolutely I can't just call somebody back to the fitting room and say, hey, your sister's <laughs> here and wants me to tell you something. So I battled with this individual for many, many minutes because in my heart I wanted to help them. I wanted to call the sister. I wanted to tell her what message I was getting. But at the same time, I figured it might be my job if she complained about it because right. it was a little bit out of the ordinary. And what I ended up doing is explaining to the spirit that I just could not, in this physical realm at this time, do what they wanted me to do. But if they came to me at a later time in a different place and I could help them, I would. And they seemed to be okay with that, and they went away, and I've never seen them again since. And I hope the woman got the message, but there's that done disbelief the first couple times it happens, and you don't know what to do. You don't know what to say. No, I agree. And I think you handled that beautifully. 
you know, oh, I always... Because I'm worried about it all these years. <laughs> no, I think you handled it beautifully because, as I have said before, you don't even know what state that woman was in. What if she was in inner turmoil still about that? You don't know the emotional um, state that anybody is in, but even more so, like you said, that could have been your job as well. When I've had things like that happen to me, I always say, you have to tell them how to find me. Or if they turn around and say, hey, what do you do for a living? You have to give me that, that kind of door to let me know it will be okay. That's a good but what I've also found is if they need it, they will find me. And I always say spirit will send you who they know you are able and um, wanting to heal. Well, you know, that does make me feel better about the whole situation because I was concerned that I had let the spirit down. But at the same time, I felt like it was just something I couldn't do at the time. So thank you for that input. I appreciate it. Oh, no problem. And you know what? I feel like what you are feeling more so is you're empathic. You're a healer. You would love anything more than to give somebody that peace of mind and that evolution in their own life just from that healing. But I think you handled that beautifully. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Right. I am empathic, and sometimes it gets in the way. It can be quite a troublesome <laughs> gift. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> you, learn how to, you learn how to balance it and handle it. Well, Couldn't agree tell, more with that. <laughs> <laughs> what would you tell someone who wanted to follow in your footsteps to learn how to do what you do? Where would they begin? What would they look for? Well, what I always say first is you have to make sure that if you want to be in this work that you're willing to take on all of it. Um, you know, the media kind of, I want to say, over embellishes mediums and psychics sometimes, and they show all the, the beautiful ends of it, but they don't show the other sides of things. I feel going into this work you have to make sure that you're secure in your own space. You're willing to spend time with just yourself and spirit Along with you have to make sure that your intentions behind it are pure and true. You know, you have to make sure that you're willing to take on other people's stuff as well because as I've noticed in my work, it's not just about delivering the messages. You're a counselor. You're a therapist. You're a friend. You're a confidant. You're a little bit of everything. Along with through what I have experienced anyway is I take home a lot of emotions from my clients, and some days I just have to have a good cry to get it all out. You just have to make sure that you're willing to take on all of it. I would say if you do know that you have spiritual gifts, that you find somebody that you trust, somebody who is willing to not only give the teaching but be there to help you along the way. But it's not just about having a teacher in the living It's about having a teacher on spirit side, which means you have to take the time to work with your guides, your angels, the divine, your loved ones, whoever you feel as though in your development you need to help you through this. But more so with anything, again, that's you making sure that you are willing to spend a lot of time within yourself. Um, That's that's a thing. (laughs) Yeah. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, Yeah. Everybody's like, oh, well, you get to spend time with people. And I'm like, yeah, but I spend still a lot of time by myself. It's me, my client, and spirit. Or it's me and spirit at home. I just feel that anybody who is truly called to this, just always make sure that you have somebody that you can trust, somebody who will guide you and direct you in the best way. And a lot of people ask, well, how do you know you can trust someone? I said, word of mouth. I feel that in this kind of business, That is the best way to know or get to know anybody is word of mouth. Who recommends somebody? Is this somebody that you trust that is recommending this person? Things of that nature. And the last thing I always feel is if and when you're ready and you want to go ahead and work on your development, ask spirit and God to show you the direction. They will put the people in your path that you need. I truly believe that 100%. I would add to that that sometimes if you have a preconceived notion of what you're looking for, you miss what they send you. So I'll be oh, open too. to whatever comes through. I, I couldn't agree more. Like I always tell everybody, you can come in here with 20 questions, and Spirit may answer two of them verbatim with evidence and everything, 
And I've actually had clients, well, I wanted all of these. And my response always is, spirit is going to give you what they know you need, not what you want. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, The question I was going to ask you just went flying right out my left ear. (laughs) (laughs) I don't have enough hands for pen today. Um, You say that you connect with your clients' loved ones. And we talked about that just a few moments ago when I was talking about my Reiki clients. How do you know for certain that it is, I'm going to use the term good because I don't have another one right in my vocabulary at the moment. How do you know that it's a good intended entity? Well, the way that I connect is I always ask Archangel Michael to please come in. And I always ask that he protects my client and I in his bubble of protection. Now, in doing this over my development, I know the sensation that Archangel Michael actually gives me. And I've sat there before when I haven't felt it, in a sense, that sensation, and I'll keep asking until I feel it. (laughs) Um, I also, as I said before, I go into it with an intensive prayer. I always ask God to protect. I only ask those of the light to enter through my door from spirit side, and I ask only those that are here for my highest, um, my client's highest good to enter as well. I feel it's more a belief system. You will have people that say, well, if you don't believe in the bad, the bad won't happen. Me being raised Catholic, though, that's a little bit different in my upbringing. Therefore, that's why I call upon the angels. I call upon God. As well as, like I, I'm sorry? That point right there is what made me ask you that, because I've always felt that if you only live in the light and you only call on the light and you don't give any credence to the bad stuff, it won't get in, but it can. I found Mm -hmm. that out the hard way several years ago. So that's what prompted me to ask you that question. Right, and and it can. You know, and some people's beliefs are different, and I will not discredit anybody else's beliefs, but for me – I feel that the way that I was raised, um, and as I said before, I was so against Catholicism for so many years. Not, I don't want to say against, but I just, I didn't understand it, and I kept just trying to push it away. But more so than anything now, I always say, even in my readings, um, when I call upon everybody's stuff, and I always say at the end, I'm like, God, I'm as of this, I'm serving you, because I feel that in his protection and the angel's protections that I trust that they will not let anything bad in. I will say earlier on in my development, um, I did kind of just open the doors to spirit because I I didn't ever really have that teaching of protection from um, the people that I studied under. And then out of nowhere, I came across this beautiful lady um, who's very, very gifted and she says, you're not protecting yourself. I'm like, what do you mean? I was told if I, don't, if I don't think about it, it's not there. And she was like, oh, honey. And she helped me to really find my faith again by saying, there's a reason that you were raised this way. There's a reason that, you know, I was taught to protect myself and to believe in a higher force and, to, and you know, call upon the angels when in need. And I truly agree with you. You can let bad things in. And you never want to just open those doors up. You want to set an intention. Who do you want or who are you going to allow in your space? Because it's not just your client's space, it's yours. Right. Well, I had always only allowed spirits with good intentions to come through. And this particular time, they came through masked, I'll say. Mm -hmm. My guidance didn't even see them coming. And it was... I'm going to say devastating. Oh, I'm it's sorry. A very, I can imagine. very bleak time while I was listening to these that I thought were my guidance, but they were not. They had another agenda, which was not to my highest good and best outcome. And what happened, just to finish the story, was apparently my guidance knew what was going on. They could see it from their side. And they sent a friend of mine out of the clear blue to come and see me one day And she did a reading for me, and when she commented on the uh, darkness of this particular group of of guidance, I saw it was like the veil fell away, and I saw who they were and saw my guidance on the other side of the room kind of a thing. 
and we oh, reconnected, wow. and, and we fixed it so that it won't happen again. But it came to me out of such a state of innocence, I guess I could say, because I was totally not expecting it. I was blindsided by it. And I really want people to, to understand what you were just saying about ask for protection, look for protection, go in with good intentions and all of that, but do protect yourself. Yes. You, and I think, you know, and that's I think how St. Michael's just bomb diggity for that. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't agree more, you know. And when I ran into that lady, um, she had said that to me as well, that one of the people that I guess I was using as a guide – um, kind of masked themselves, and they actually were arguing with her, saying, well, she gave me permission to talk to her. And I'm sitting here devastated, going, what? No, no, I would not, <laughs> you know. And she kind of explained everything. And one of the best things that she told me is because I use a pendulum, of course, when you're doing Reiki, things of that nature. Um, but she had said, she said, use your pendulum. She says, before you connect with your angels or your guides or whoever, she says, you use the pendulum to connect with your higher self first. By connecting with your higher self first, you'll then know that it's authentic with who you're allowing through because your higher self will look into it before they allow it to come through. And so I love that. And you're right. You never know, but set the intention at least. Ask. You know, you don't have to be religious. I tell people all the time, I might be Catholic, but I have nothing to say about your religion, your preference of, or anything like that. There is no judgment with that whatsoever. But within your own belief system, find something that works for you. One of the things that I've discovered over my years of working in this arena and and with uh, energies and higher beings and that sort of thing is that what you call yourself here on the planet, Catholic, Baptist, Buddhist, Hindu, whatever, it really doesn't matter because when you get down to the push and shove of it, it's all the same thing. And Couldn't agree more. And to that higher being, to that higher self, to that Christ consciousness, unity consciousness, whatever you want to call it, you do get your best answers. And you, you can connect any way that works for you. It's really funny. I'm about as Catholic as a doorstop. But, when <laughs> I, but I find myself going to the Hail Mary sometimes when I need a good prayer, and what just absolutely blows my mind is it comes out in French every time. Oh, wow. <laughs> and so you, you just don't know where the guidance is coming from, but if you're open to it, it's always there. And oh, I couldn't it anymore. just because it's it's kind of out of your wheelhouse. Well, I always say if it's abnormal and it seems crazy, it's probably the best messages you're ever going to get. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> you know, even in my readings when I have the craziest pieces of evidence, um, if you don't mind, I'll tell you one short little story about one. Oh, please do. I had, I had a squirrel, literally a dog and a squirrel show up for a client. And I'm looking at this. Next thing I know, I see the dog attack the squirrel and start dragging the squirrel through this house. And me, I'm looking and talking to everybody on spirit side saying, y'all better have this right. I'm about to look crazy right now (laughs) if I say this. So long story short, the dog goes through, shows me all this, takes the squirrel upstairs and lays it on a bed. So I'm like, okay, I trust what spirit gives me. So I look at my client and I said, I have a dog coming through. I said, but the craziest thing, I said, they have a squirrel with them. I said, but the squirrel is in your home. And she goes, oh, my gosh. She goes, my dog killed a squirrel, brought it in, and laid it up on her husband's pillow, gifting it to him. Oh, it gets better. Then the dog kept giving me 1957, 1957. And we couldn't place it. I said, well, ma'am, I said, I don't know, but the doll just keeps saying 57. I have to give it to you. So she goes, I don't know. I'll have to think about it later. So we get done. Everything's beautiful. She leaves. She's, she didn't leave right away, though. She went out, out to the front and was, like, looking through the crystals and stuff. And she goes, I have a question for you. She goes, I know this is going to sound crazy. She says, but could it be that I called my dog Heinz 57? Oh. And I said, oh, my gosh, yes. That can exactly be it. But 
I mean, something as little as a squirrel and a dog and 50 cents. I mean, just the weirdest things usually are the most validating. <laughs> yeah, I was so, to tell a client something about a blue duck one time, and she completely understood. I still don't know what it meant, but she <laughs> did, and she was happy about it. So woohoo! <laughs> Right? Sometimes they don't want to share the story, but they always validate, okay, I know exactly what that is. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Val- validation is good. <laughs> oh, yeah. What can you, you tell know, our listeners about? I'm sorry, you were going to say something? Oh, I was going to say that's why I consider myself an evidential because it's those little validating things such as the dog or the blue duck or, you know, one time it was the way that a man was eating an ear of corn that his grandson couldn't stand the way that his grandpa ate corn. It drove him crazy in the living. You know, that's why I love evidence because it gives them the validation that it's truly their loved one speaking. That's always good, too, for the person who's come to you because it's funny, uh, on this side of the veil, we seem to need validation. It's like somebody says, well, what time did that happen? Mm-hmm. Not realizing that in the spirit world, time is not not important at all. Exactly. But times and numbers and anything like that that will really stick with a person, they can say, yes, that happened, is always quite helpful to the message bringer. What I was going to ask you is, what would you say would be a good way to find the right psychic or right medium for you as a client? I know you said word of mouth is a good way, but can you narrow it down a little bit? Well, I would say, you know, um, honestly, the way that I found one was I just Googled. I literally Googled, um, I set an intention, as I had said before, of what I wanted, the price, the time, (laughs) those kinds of things, and they delivered. Um, I will say when I Googled, you know, in my old area, only two popped up that actually had websites. Um, And, you know, that's huge for me because I'm I'm a physical plane person. I like to read reviews. I I want the knowingness um, that other people were happy. Um, and coincidentally, there weren't any reviews for psychics or mediums for the most part. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so to me, I would say, again, word of mouth. Or even at that, you may go to one and you realize you don't like the way that they work, and that's okay because we all are very different in the way that we work. So it may take you time to finding maybe the one that fits you, It could be just reading the bio about somebody because I feel from what I've learned is we're all so different, but on our websites, we all put a little bit about us. So maybe finding somebody who you feel you connect to, maybe it be their reading or, you know, maybe it's just that aha moment. Um, I would say call around, maybe asking, how long have you been doing this? I get that question a lot. How long have you been doing this? Where did it come? You know, everybody wants a lot of questions, and I'm okay with answering those because if that makes you more comfortable, then that's okay. If you do have religious preferences, look into that. If you have different belief systems, look into that. I don't want to say there's one way or another to find. I feel, honestly, you're going to be led wherever you're going to get the best messages for what you're needing in that moment. So ask. Ask your spirit team, your loved ones. All right, look, guys, I want to talk to you. You know, help me find somebody. I like that setting the intention. I think that's very important no matter what we're doing even if it's just cooking dinner. If you set an intention for it to be a certain way, your chances of it coming out the way you need it to or the way it's to your highest good and best outcome is always better if you go in intention to intention, wouldn't you say? Oh, I couldn't agree more. You know, people don't realize how much just their intention or the words that they say out in the universe affect their lives. Setting the intention to have a beautiful day, you're going to have a beautiful day. You wake up in the morning and say, oh, I don't feel good, you're going to stay not feeling well. You know, I say it to people all the time, set a good intention, speak what you want into the universe because your words create your reality. I can't argue with that at all. It's one of my, <laughs> biggest, it's one of my biggest classes, that self-talk thing. Not only do you set the tone for the universe and for your day, but you also set it in your biology. 
Yes. And once your biology is in line with your higher self, then you can't go wrong, right? <laughs> no, you can't unless you fall off the wagon and then you just say, look, I made a mistake and now I'm getting right back on. <laughs> well, one of the things that I have discovered is that if we're grateful for absolute and I'm, or in appreciation, that's my, my new word, it's a little bit higher vibration than gratitude. But if we are grateful for absolutely everything, even the stuff that we consider not to be the best fun stuff, but if we're grateful for the lesson, if we're grateful for the opportunity to see something in a different way from this unpleasantness, chances are it turns it around and it's not as bad as it was. Oh, I agree. You know, and one of the things I like to always give to my clients is when there are things in their life that they're trying to change, People don't realize the people in your life, they are mirrors of what you need to learn about yourself. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, in saying, okay, this is a bad situation, but what is it that I can learn out of it? Once you learn the lesson, spirit will change that for you and put something new in your path. You know, I tell people a lot of times, I get a lot of, what about my career? I don't like my job. Um, Going into that, okay, what is it in your, in Spirit Way says, look at those around you. See what it is that you can teach them or what is it that they can teach you. When you learn that lesson, Spirit will transform you along with usually transforming that position as well for you or giving you something new to validate and give you almost like a gift for learning that lesson. And a lot of people don't realize Whatever lessons you don't learn this lifetime, you're coming back again and you're going to do it over. <laughs> well, so. that's true in this lifetime, too. A lot of my clients will say, I keep choosing the wrong mate. I keep looking in the wrong career. I keep doing this wrong and that wrong. And so I tell them, I said, all right, start looking for patterns. Go back and revisit all of these relationships that you've had, all of these jobs that you've had, all of these circumstances that you found yourself unhappy in and find the connecting lesson. And if you can't find it, just ask your higher guidance to show it to you. Yes. And people, a lot of people don't understand, you have to have trust. If you oh, are going true. to work with yeah. spirit, is trust. Trust that they're going to deliver. Trust that, yes, it might not be on your time frame, but they're going to get it to you. Um, as you know, as physical plane people, we are so, as you said before, we're about time. Everything has a time. We need it now. Yeah, um, tomorrow should have been here today. But in reality, <laughs> life moves the way it needs to so that we can evolve into greater people. And, you know, even the Bible says God can move your mountain, but he, he can choose. Is he going to move it mountain by mountain, pebble by pebble, or truckload by truckload? So you can't rush something beautiful. And the other thing with that is is you have to believe that you deserve it. If you feel that you're picking all the wrong things, do you have a standard? Are you telling yourself or have you even yourself acknowledged what it is you truly want or what you feel you need? Sometimes people have to stop and look at themselves and actually have a plan. Look at it. What kind of job are you looking for? What kind of mate are you looking for? What do you feel you deserve that's going to bring you into a higher awareness of yourself as well? That's a very good point. And the other part of that is to allow yourself to forgive yourself for whatever it is you think you've done wrong that gives you these lower uh, frequency gifts, let's say. Like yeah. if you're upset with yourself for something you did when you were a teenager and you don't think you deserve the right mate, you're not going to get them. I couldn't agree more with that. We're so worried that we're going to let someone down, whether it be God, spirit, ourselves, our loved ones, our friends. Like me but in if the you sitting just... room with the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But what did you say to yourself after? I'm sure you apologized to yourself and was like, I feel that I did what was best. And well, you know, after a lot of... I got my mind wrapped around the forgiveness thing and forgiving yourself, you're absolutely right, I did. And I went back and told the universe to tell that spirit, whoever it may have been, uh, that I was sorry I didn't help them right away, but 
it probably was to their highest good and best outcome. And it did kind of evaporate and go away, but you're absolutely right. You have to forgive, and especially yourself. Yes, and a lot of people who are religious, you know, we're always worried about what the big man upstairs thinks. And what I have found and I have learned through spirit is that if you can own up to your mistakes, that's the biggest form of forgiveness that anybody can give you because you're acknowledging maybe your faults or maybe you had an off day, whatever it may be. But if you can acknowledge it, the forgiveness comes on a greater scale. This is a truism. I went through a period of karma. I don't know Lisa. I don't know if that's a big thing with you or not, but I feel that if we can let go of all the garbage that's in our lives from way back, many lifetimes ago, we'll do better, we'll fly higher, we'll see clearer and all that sort of thing. And so I had done some extra deep work on me, like you were saying earlier, you have to clean yourself up before you can help anybody else. And I was doing these karmic releases, and I worked and worked and worked and worked, and I felt better and better with each one. And I, I thought I was done. Now, here's here's the funny part. Spirit knows better. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, yeah. A couple of weeks after I had <clears throat> finished this uh, release thing, Spirit comes to me during meditation and says, we have something for you. And I'm all excited. Oh, goody, 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 what is it? Now, my longtime listeners know this story, but they dumped this big pile of karmic poo right in the middle of my living room. <laughs> and I was just stunned. What is this? And I'm recognizing a piece of it here and there. So I've already done this. And they said, no, no, no. You forgot something very important while you were doing this. To which I replied, oh, really, what? <laughs> and you've got to forgive yourself. And I think, just from my perspective, that's one of the hardest things that we have to learn as we go through our uh, spiritual awakening and our raising and expanding of our frequencies and understandings, that we must forgive ourselves. And so I had to go back through all of this stuff and forgive myself for each and every little thing. And I hit some really rocky places where I had a, a hard time doing that. But once I was able to do it, it made all the difference in the world. And a lot of people say, oh, no, you should never forgive yourself for anything that you've done wrong or heinous. But that I don't feel that that's the way of it. What do you think? I, I completely agree with that statement. Um, there's a woman by the name of Linda Drake who um, she has this book. I don't actually remember the title of it right now, but it talks about inner child work. And I feel that what you were just describing, in a sense, was inner child work. You were going back through life choices or incidences that needed to be healed. And through that as well is you not only face what happened, you actually face it per the Akashic record. So not how you remember it, but the truth of it. Along with you go in and you not only forgive or heal from that from the other person who might have been involved or people, you're right. You have to go in and forgive yourself. Because, yes, we've all had our ups and downs. We've all had bad choices in life. But if we are not able to grow from them and learn whatever lesson it may have been, maybe it was a horrible lesson at the time, or so we thought. Or, you know, maybe it did take us 20 years to realize why we had to go through it. But you're right. If you forgive yourself, you just feel so much lighter instantly. I have always heard the saying, and I've used it many, many times, living without forgiveness is like drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. Yeah. But it just struck me as we were talking that if you don't forgive yourself, not only are you drinking your own poison, but you're killing yourself on a spiritual level without even realizing it. So self-forgiveness is a very, very powerful thing on many, many levels. Right, and it doesn't even have to be things from you know, years ago. It can be present day things. Oh, sure. So, you know, say you're trying to eat healthy and then you slip up one day and you eat a donut. Forgive yourself. Okay, you made a mistake. You kind of fell off again, but it's okay. You get back up and you try again. Because it's when you stop trying 
that you stop caring about yourself truly. You don't ever want to beat yourself up because spirit is not beating you up. I tell so many clients, they'll come in and you can tell they're so nervous about what is going to come up in their life, potentially in this city. The first thing I say is I connect with a link of love. These are messages of love from above. Um, but there is no judgment on spirit's side. And people need to realize, yes, here in the living, unfortunately, there is judgment. But when you're talking to your loved ones, your guys, your angels, God, whoever, there's no judgment. They just want to help you to better your life. They don't want to beat you up about anything. They want to help you better yourself, raise your vibrations, change your life for the good. I agree with that completely and totally. (laughs) (laughs) I I was the best self-beater-upper on the planet. I was the queen of beating myself up for years and years and years. And I think we learn how to do that early on in life because we're so concerned with what other people think of what we're doing, how we're doing it, why we're doing it, and all that sort of thing. But if we can let go of other people's ideas of what's right for us and connect to our own higher guidance and decide ourselves what's right for us, we'll find out that our uh, path is a whole lot clearer, wouldn't you say? Oh, yes. We create our own reality. We do. I tell my, my clients all the time, you don't, you're not going to go to hell. You're creating your own hell here on earth by these false ideas of what you think other people think of you. And right. my mother always used to say, don't tend to, to somebody else's knitting, tend to your own knitting and your sweater gets made. And I always thought that was the dumbest thing I ever heard. Geez, Mom, why? But I get it now. <laughs> right. <laughs> I've never heard that, but it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> My mother you was know, a wise, I... wise woman. She took, took <laughs> years to figure it out. <laughs> That's how I felt about my grandma. I've called her several times over the years. I'm like, it all makes sense now. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, the biggest thing is a lot of times when we have people in our lives who, you know, maybe we don't know the reason that they're taken out of our lives as well with what you were saying, is that you're right. We can't focus on what other people are doing. We have to focus on ourselves. But at the same token, if somebody is taken out of your life, you got to look at it in the intent that God had a higher purpose or spirit had a, a higher purpose for you, and unfortunately, that person can't be there anymore. You know, my friend calls it the trolley, and I think it was the best analogy I've ever heard because when she was telling me the story, when I was going through something in my own life, it made so much sense. She says, not everybody is meant to stay on your trolley to the end. She's like, some get on, some get back on. She's like, but no matter what, your trolley keeps moving. But if you're still trying to reach for that person who jumped off, it's going to stop. So you got to keep pressing forward in all areas of life, no matter the good or the bad. Set the intention again. Something good's going to come out of it. There's a rhyme or a reason for it. One thing I would say to that, besides I love that analogy that's awesome and spot on, is stop defining things as good and bad. Right. Accept them that they are just what they are. And that's a very Zen thing to say, but it's true. Uh, Once you stop labeling anything, good, bad, negative, positive, that sort of thing, and just allow it to be what it is, you'll find out that those walls that we build around each label start to blur and disappear. And once they do that, you are more connected to yourself than you've ever been in the past. Oh, yes. Um. We, I like to say that we all wear sunglasses for the most part, or how people say what the rose-colored glasses. I know I do. I hear it all the time. You think of, you find the best in everything, or you try, you know, you smile through this, or whatever it may be, but I've always realized that it's okay. If you can look at life in a beautiful way instead of harboring or imprisoning yourself just because we're on a physical plane and you let other people's thoughts or idealisms control your own, You're losing you. And the biggest part in in what I have found in this kind of work and this healing work that we do, no matter if it's Reiki, mediumship, psychism, um, whatever it may be, acupuncture even is very healing, you know, holistic, anything on the holistic side, you cannot lose yourself. You have to trust and believe in everything that you know, everything you hear, everything you see. 
in your work. So you can't lose you. I think that's a very, very good point. And I think it's a good place to stop our show today. Don't hang up because I want to talk to you on the other side. But I do want to thank you so much for being on the program with me today. Uh, you have given us a whole lot of wonderful uh, fodder for the brain pan there. And please, everybody, thank you for joining us for the show. And if you'd like to send in a question or a suggestion for a topic that you'd like covered on the show, send your question, your suggestion, or your, your request to me at chessie at chessieroberts.com. And you can find all of my information at chessieroberts.com, all of my classes and programs and everything. My music is at archersmeadow.com, and you get some of that at the opening and closing of the show. And my book, Evolving into Cell from the Puppet to the Master, My Evolution from the Cradle to the Grid, is on amazon.com. And if you read it, please feel free to leave me a review. I would really appreciate it. You'll find all of uh, Jay Marie's contact information posted underneath the show when it goes live on YouTube. Thank you all for listening, and come back anytime to hear Get on the Grid with Chelsea Roberts. Have a great week. Bright blessings, and bye-bye.